From there, her behavior started getting stranger. After that night, she wasn't doing anything really overt or suspicious, but she was vague about what she was doing. She would say that she's going out to see someone, her friend, or going on a run to run an errand and stuff like that. Welcome everybody to another edition of Messy and Motivational with your girl Rochelle and your guy Frankie in the studio today getting ready for some hot and heavy topics. Yep, always bringing you dating and relationship discussions, anything you could potentially think about. We scour the internet looking for stories, whether it's questions and answers about marriage, questions and answers about dating, questions and answers about divorce. Look, we've got you covered right here on our dating and relationship talk show. So are you ready for today's topic? I think so. I really think so. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but there's nothing like having a best friend. Would you, would you say? Would you agree? Yeah, uh, yeah I agree. You know, yeah, that, that, best that, friends are good. That, yeah. that good to go, go to friend. But, right. you know, I don't know how best of a bestie our first story is, especially when you think about what this best friend may have did with a certain brother's wife. Hmm. So, okay. I, I'll lead in with that and I'll jump into the story. And this one actually comes from a, an Ask Advice post on Reddit. So we want to get into that and share a little bit of that. And it goes into the title, My Wife Cheated with My Best Friend. Okay. All right. All right. What's so, so just kind of breaking it down. He says, I guess I should call him my former best friend at this point. But it's hard to accept it's all gone just like that. You spend so many years with a person building a relationship and one day it all turns to dust. I've known him since high school, 15 years ago. He was like a brother to me. Mm. So really deep there. My sons, they looked at him like he was an uncle. When we were younger, we were at each other's house as well all the time. He was always coming with me Everywhere we went, he was at my wedding. Matter of fact, he would have been the best man at the wedding if things didn't change that up. Many trips and nights spent together. Many times we helped each other out. Many conversations about life, love, and ourselves. He was always that go-to person. Now, jumping over to the marriage, I've been married to my wife for almost five years. So that's, that's a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. But we've been together for seven. So I'm giving you some background there. Uh, I remember when we first met, love at first sight. She was gorgeous and had these really piercing blue eyes and a really infectious laugh. Huh, okay. We hit it off, and to my surprise, she accepted when I asked her out, even though I felt like she was out of my league. Okay. I fell even more in love with her as we got to know each other. She had such a passion for life and helping people. She was so kind and gentle with everyone, just a really warm person, and that made me Love her more. Okay, so, so that's so, sweet. So, so context there. I'm not saying our marriage is perfect. We did have arguments, but they were never major ones. The trouble started when my best friend broke up with his girlfriend. He was pretty upset about it and took it hard. I talked to him, but my wife asked me one day if I cared if she went for a coffee with him to talk and give him a woman's opinion. I told her that was fine with me. She and my best friend were also friends. We'd done couple trips with my friend and his girlfriend. And she'd also hung out with him tons because he was around me so much. Okay. Didn't, you know, nothing. Okay. nothing out of the ordinary, I guess. I didn't think anything of it because their relationship never seemed inappropriate. I do remember him saying I was lucky and she was attractive when we first started dating. And when I married her, but there were no inappropriate jokes or anything like that. My wife might have said he was handsome at some point, but that was it. I saw no red flags. And even thinking about it more, I still don't see any. I never saw anything which made me think there was ever a chance of them being more than friends. So you were totally blind with this one. Um, when my wife came back from coffee, she seemed a bit off. She was really angry with his ex and said he deserved better. I remember telling her something like, he's young and he'll mend in time. And she seemed very upset by me saying this. She said that he needed time and what whatever girl ended up with him would be very lucky. And his ex was a fool to leave him. 
I may be misremembering mis parts of the conversation, but that was the basic gist. She was very sparse on details and very vague, but it didn't seem weird to me at that time. It seemed like she was being protective the same way I would be protective of him as my friend. From there, her behavior started getting stranger. After that night, she wasn't doing anything really overt or suspicious, but she was vague about what she was doing. She would say that she's going out to see someone, her friend, or going on a run to run an errand, stuff like that. I noticed my friend was being weird too, but I thought it was because of his split and him being depressed. I would invite him to hang out and he would turn me down. I started seeing less and less of him. When I did see him, he was different. I would not say nervous, but definitely seemed not to be comfortable. One day he sent me a message to stop by his house. He said we needed to talk. I drove over there, not suspecting anything. I knocked on the door and he came to answer. I tried to make some jokes and light conversation and he completely ignored me. He asked me to go into the living room and there was my wife sitting on his couch. Hmm. I don't know if I knew at the moment, but I did feel a sense of dread start to come over me. She started crying almost as soon as I walked in and he jumped right in and told me that there was no easy way to say what he was about to say, but he and my wife were in love and they wanted to be together. Hmm. That's a heck of a stop by wow. for a chat. Okay. Um, I stood there completely stunned. I felt like I wasn't even alive for a while. When I started to come back to my senses, they both tried to say how sorry they were and that they both loved me and regretted happening. They told me that this just happened and they never intended for things to turn out like this. They knew they were wrong, but it didn't matter because they were in love. They both promised that they had not had sex and it was an emotional <laughs> affair. I'm not sure if that is true or not, but I don't know if it really matters. And that is basically where we are now. Since that day, I've gotten more texts from the from them apologizing and ones from my wife, you know, saying I'm if I'm OK and telling me she's here for me and, and still cares for me. But I mostly ignore them. They aren't as frequent anymore either. She decided to move out of our house, and my friends told me she ended up moving in with him. That was only a few months ago. She actually stopped by my house a few days ago to pick up some things. I tried to avoid her, but then she asked me if I had a second. She told me that she and my former friend are trying to get pregnant. Oh, wow. Mm. She wanted to give me a heads up so that we can deal with it as we go through our divorce. She also wanted to tell me personally because she felt like I deserved to know and hear it from her. It hurts so much to hear that. So I'm here looking for any advice you can give. I don't know how to deal with her getting pregnant. I feel like that's going to be a struggle and source of pain once it happens. I feel so jealous of him because he is getting the life I wanted with her. I also know that her pregnancy is really the end. Once that happens, there's no chance we could reconcile. I have considered asking her to try counseling, but... I haven't because I doubt she would be interested since she wants him and a life together with him. Life just isn't fair sometimes. What are your that, thoughts? That right. I mean, my reaction to this and my advice to this would be to just move on. I mean, it sounds like, first of all, you know, they went about this whole ordeal extremely shady. On the low. On the low. Your best friend cheating with your wife. That right there says, you know, okay. First off, you wasn't my friend if you sleeping with my wife. Second, um, if this is what you guys want, then go have it. You know, I would try to just exit that situation by any means necessary. No phone calls, no texts. No letters in the mail, right. no Facebook, nothing, none of that. Don't even, don't even reach out to me for anything. And the fact that she's coming over to tell him, you know, now we're trying for a baby, that just, that just adds more salt to the wound. It's like, why would you do that? So I would yeah. personally just try to wash my hands of the whole situation and try to move on as best as I can. Of course, it's hard because right. you've been married to this woman for the past five years, I think it said. And, so and been with her for seven. Right, and been with her for seven. So, you know, there's no talking to your, your ex-best friend about it. There's no talking to your soon-to-ex-be-wife about it. Just wash your hands and move on. And and as far as you reaching out to her for counseling, that's a no. That's a no-go. I, I wouldn't even attempt to do that. She's already made up her mind 
that she wants a future with your best friend and now she's trying for a baby so eventually down the road they'll once the divorce is final with you two she'll probably try to marry this guy so i would just leave the whole situation alone um as they say what goes around comes around let it be I mean, as for me, so I'm going to kind of break this down. My, my reaction to the whole thing, I'm going to give you that now. And make sure you stick around for some tips. Maybe you've been through something like this. And, of course, we will always try to add a little motivation right. to the mess. So, first off, let's for sure keep it like you kept it. That is not your best friend, bro. Um, as soon as he got rid of his ex, he moved on to his next, which was... Yo, girl, ain't no telling how long. That, don't don't just think that that's something that that's just out of nowhere happened. Mm -hmm. And don't think that it wasn't just him, but her as well. So things like this, just you know, you know, those, as they say, when 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 people move on so quickly, they've already been plotting and planning yeah. that 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 next loved one. So my reaction, you know, they're, they're both foul, faulty. Now, what I do want to do is transition into. The motivational side of things you know you came into the show asking what advice would you or what advice would we give as far as you know your post online and wanting advice so I'm just going to give you some tips and of course you can kind of react to the tips tips for recovering getting over such a bad heartbreak mm -hmm. um, the first thing I would do is right now it sounds like you're, you're really down on yourself but really focus in on building that self-esteem you know, you, you, you kind of threw it out there with wifey that she was out of your league. And apparently if she married you, she wasn't out of your league. So give yourself some credit. Start to work on you. Build a stronger you. What are your thoughts there? I agree. Anytime you go through something as uh, terrible as this, you must work on your self-esteem. Because now you're in a, a state where... You're probably very vulnerable and you want to get back out there and maybe find somebody to um, love or to be with right. or some some form of companionship. So I would agree and say work on your self-esteem. A lot of times when things happen like this, depression sets in or self-doubt right. sets in or you start to blame yourself for the things that um, some your wife did or your spouse did to you. But you have to kind of dial that back and say, you know what? This is not my fault. She made those own personal decisions on her own. So it was up to her to come to you to let you know, let her or let you know how she was feeling in order to avoid that situation with your best friend. So don't don't uh, blame yourself for what happened. And of course, if you need to go to counseling, if you need to go to therapy for this right. ordeal that you're going through, then put yourself first because apparently they didn't. They all were here key, key, keying and cooling up with each other. So they had your feelings weren't, you know, in mind at all. Your best interest wasn't in mind at all when right. it comes to them. So you have to take the initiative and put your feelings first, put yourself first and make sure that you're taking care of yourself mentally. Right. I mean, the next step I would definitely get into is, I mean, I, I definitely know, I know you definitely know, when you're together with someone for so long like that, five years is a long time. So you said you've been together seven. Mm -hmm. You start to build a lot of habits, per se. Um, you know, a lot of times when we're, we're out trying to find something to eat, it's like we end up at the same places, you know, same restaurants, uh, when we go shopping, same stores, etc. What I encourage you to do is to forge a new path and find new places to go. Venture out, because the last thing you want is to start going to some of the places you've been with with her. And then they both show up, potentially somewhere down the line with the new baby, and that just brings up all of this, you know, anger, anger, and, you yeah. know, excite inside. I mean, what do you, how you yeah. feeling there? Yeah. Uh, new stomping grounds is important <laughs> <laughs> because like Frankie said, you don't want to be out somewhere that you two used to go together and then you bump into them. They got a family now and that's just going to spark something in right. you that you don't even, you may not even know that's there. So yeah, new territory. I mean, even if you have to move, look, even if you have to move out of the city to get a fresh start, to meet new people, to to kind of reset the atmosphere a little bit or reset your life, then I would say go for it. You know, 
It sounds like they, you know, this guy is still young and in his prime. Why not pick up, relocate, hit the reset button and say, you know what? Now I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me my way. And I'm going I'm to get through this. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And another big one is stay away from the rebound. So many times, especially, I mean, I, 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 of course, I'm speaking from a guy's perspective, and I'm, I'm sure women probably do the same thing. But when somebody moves on out of your life, the first thing we want to do is find that next boo to make it seem like we've recovered, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But right now, you have to be cautious about rebound dating right. because jumping into something new without having, which it sounds like, your initial relationship resolved can only lead to more problems now with the new person you're trying to connect with, along with dealing with all the stuff. they That's the last thing you want to be doing on a date with your new boo is talking about, well, my, my ex-wife, she cheated on me with my best friend, and they, they're having a baby, so I'm still trying to recover. No, you want you want to be yeah. over yeah. that component to the point where, you know, I mean, of course, if you want to you know divulge what happened, you can, but... If you do give up the tea on what happened, long story short, it doesn't come off as painful or like you're still not over your ex. You're still you're healing. Trying, right. Yeah. You might want to save that conversation for the therapist, right. not for your new boo. I mean, right. unless you and your new boo are in so deep, you know, now as to where you can talk about it with it actually not affecting you where you're just talking about it. You right. know, you're just trying to let them know a little bit about your past and a little bit about what happened. That's cool. But if you're still talking about it and it takes you to the point of grief or it takes you to the point where it's upsetting you, then no, you don't want to bring that into a new relationship or into a new possibility. Right. Right. And, and also when it comes to what you're going through right now, we all hate pain, pain as mm -hmm. well. Unless you're listening to like Cardi B or Megan Thee Stallion, they say they love pain, but that's a whole no, different type baby. of pain. That's a whole that, different type. That's, that's, a different that's that bedroom pain. That's they a different type about. of pain. That's a different type of pain. <laughs> so when it comes to pain, we want to get through it rather quickly. But I need you to understand that your life is not a major motion picture. You know, like when we watch our movies at the very end, you you see everything all tied up in a pretty package. You know, put a bow on top. Healing will take time. Mm -hmm. So give yourself time. Don't feel like you have to rush through this or there's something wrong with you for not getting over. I mean, we we've done stories here where, you know, people are still hurting 15, 20 years later. So we're yeah. not saying that's going to wow. be you, but definitely give yourself time yeah. for healing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Everything takes time, especially from relationships, you know, and it's like I try to drive this home so much. That when you hop out of a relationship or something goes wrong in that relationship and you guys end up divorced or broken up or whatever, don't run into a new relationship right away right. because you're trying to heal from the old relationship. That is the biggest mistake that anybody could ever make. And I don't have to be an expert to tell anybody that. That's mistake number one when right. you're getting out of a relationship because you're looking to you're looking to find somebody to immediately fill the void or to validate you, you know? So yeah, please don't do that. Right. Right. And that pretty much brings us to the end, giving you some relationship advice here on messy and motivational. Each week we come to you once again with questions and answers about marriage, questions and answers about dating, questions and answers about divorce, real mature conversations. Dating and relationship discussions is what we do here each week. You can also catch us online by visiting YouTube where you can just search hashtag Messy Motivate. Also, if you just want to listen to the audio, we're on plenty of podcast sites like Spotify. You can also get us on Google Podcasts and more. Messy Motivate. It's been a blast. Also, if you're on YouTube, take a moment to subscribe to get instant alerts. And here in CMAC, always visit us at cmac.tv. And that's a wrap right here on SCN Motivational. Yeah, Any yeah. final thoughts before we check up out of here? Put yourself first always when you're exiting out of a relationship. Put your health first and especially your mental health first. All right. And we'll see you next time. Peace.